Don here in Florida, and today I wanna to talk about broken bolts. Broken bolts seem to be the bane of just about everybody out there. Uh, you get a broken bolt off in a casting or down in a hole or something, and it can be a real pain in the butt to uh, remove. About 40 years ago or so, I learned a method from my heavy equipment shop teacher uh, in high school, so I guess it's more than 40 years ago, and he showed me how to wash bolts out with a cutting torch. And that soon became my favorite way of bolt removal. Uh, I didn't actually practice it till I got out of high school. I was working in a, uh, a lumber or for a lumber company, and this was up in Maine, where there's a lot of road salt and all these heavy trucks and tractors and pieces of equipment tend to uh, rust up and seize up, and a lot of parts can go to waste if you can't get them apart. And uh, the guy I was working for had never seen it done before, and frankly, I'd never done it. I think I was like 20 years old. And uh, I went ahead, he said, go ahead and, and do it. I mean, we've got nothing to lose, the parts is a waste. And I went ahead and did it, and it worked great. And I've just been doing it ever since. So let's go on out there, and I'll show you how to do this. Okay, to speed this up, I've already gone ahead and cleaned up the broken end of the bolt where it was rust. There we go. See, you want to get this part just as clean as you can and we're going to do two bolts here I got one here and one in the end casting here so uh, let's go ahead and do it okay so we're setting the gauges to uh, 40 it's actually 45 because it drops quite a lot when I go to cut and seven on the acetylene Some of that steel blew back and melted to the outer surface, but that's because we're on steel, steel. There we go. A little bit of slag down in the bottom. And I can, I can knock that melted steel back out with a uh, with a grinder here in a few minutes. Okay, so a buddy of mine gave me this piece of stainless a while back. He said there's a broken off tap in here. That doesn't look like a tap. That looks like a drill, but it it's stuck in there. It's not coming out. And this was due for the scrap bin. But I thought, you know what? Let's see if we can cut that out of there. Let's see if we can wash it out and see what happens. Okay, because there's more drill surface area here than there is stainless, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put it in a pan of water with some wick material around it. <clears throat> and the, the reason being is the only place stainless ever seems to like to release heat is into my fingers. So we're gonna try to release it into that water so we don't mess up that uh, piece while we're taking that bit out. So let's see what we can do here. Notice I'm concentrating right in the center of that, I'm not moving outward. I'm looking to get that cutting temperature before I hit it. Okay, it's hard to tell while it's still uh, cooling down. I'm gonna have to knock that slag off the end, but it looks like I got probably 90% of it out of there. 
the rest of it I can probably just drill out. That was really deep. Okay, here's another one broken off in uh, some cast iron. And I, I like shooting through cast iron. So. See how nice cast iron is? That's so clean. Okay, let's get a tap in there. A little bit of slag right there. I can feel it. There we go. Yeah, it just fell right out the end. Look at that. Just like a new one. It's nice to do it when it's warm because then you know everything's kind of expanded out and it'll break free easy. So there we go. See that? I don't know if we can get that on the camera there. Those threads are really nicely defined in there. Didn't didn't hurt of one. So very nice. The uh, stainless piece, I, I got pretty deep in there, probably a little over an inch. Uh, I'm sure that that drill bit's detempered now, so I could probably just take a uh, carbide bit and just drill the that the rest of the way out. I think it's just a little bit too deep for that torch. If I had my full size set here, I could have probably blown the whole thing right out. But um, in the end, look, the slag just fell off when I uh, took it out of the water. As soon as, it, as soon as it came out, it just fell right off. So, but uh, that'll clean up nicely. Uh, whatever's left in there, carbide uh, bit will take out, <clears throat> and I'll have a nice piece of uh, stainless to use now. Okay, so you may be asking yourself, how can this work like it does? I mean, why aren't you ruining these outer threads here, or the inner threads? Okay, the reason is because we have inside here, between the threads, corrosion or rust, which can create a porosity, which acts as a thermal barrier which as you know, you have a thermal bar barrier, you have low conduction. So when you apply your heated tip here, that heat comes down and it starts going out like this, but it doesn't want to go through that thermal barrier. Okay, it doesn't want to go through that corrosion rust. Even though it, it's seized in there and it should have a, a solid contact point, it should be acting like a heat sink because of any corrosion or porosity that's in there, it's gonna emanate down through the uh, screw or bolt before it actually goes into the casting itself. So the important point, or the important thing to remember is to, as soon as that heats up to the point where it's ready to shoot out, don't keep heating it. Uh, blow it and the force inward, if it's like that stainless piece, will cause the flame to burst inward like this and then it'll drive the slag out. If it's an open back, it'll simply just shoot it right through like this. Uh, personally, I like uh, doing aluminum. Aluminum works really great for this. Uh, uh, cast iron. The steel, as you saw in that one piece there, when it slags over like this, it will weld itself back onto the metal. So I'm going to have to go back and, and grind that off. But the threads themselves in there uh, look really good, especially after I re-tapped them. And the uh, screw's seating in nice and tight now, so I'm happy about that. All right, folks, I guess that's just about going to cover it. Um, if you haven't done this before and you do know how to use a cutting torch, I would start off with doing things like pins and stuff. When I started this video, I mentioned that I started on, uh, they were brake pins, brake cam pins on uh, heavy trucks, which are smooth bores through there, and they're all castings. So they make a good point to practice. <clears throat> uh, and then move yourself on up to bolts and stuff. You've got to get a, a kind of a feel for that torch and what it's going to do and the effects it has when you are washing. Uh, like I said, I, I prefer doing castings. I've blown uh, bolts out of uh, manifolds, lots of exhaust manifolds, engine blocks, uh, you know, tons of brake parts. You know, it, it's just, the list goes on. It's amazing what you can do with it. Uh, aluminum, I, I do not fear aluminum with it. Aluminum dissipates any heat that does get onto it so quickly that <clears throat> it usually has no effect. The 
threads a lot of times they are going to collect some slag in there so it is good to if you let it cool sometimes you can knock that slag out with with a punch but uh, if you're in a hurry you know you can grab a, a tap and usually run it down through there real quick and, and uh, knock any leftover slag out uh, pretty easily so that's not a problem anyway once you get a feel for it uh, it could turn out to be the uh, funnest method of a uh, stuck bolt removal <laughs> that you'll use and it's definitely the quickest uh, I, I had to kind of make time in this video just to get some minutes in uh, also, just as an added uh, point, I've kept a log of all the things that I've ruined over the years in this notebook here. And uh, I've written down every single thing. Yeah, that's nothing. I've never ruined anything doing this. So the only thing that you may want to pay attention to is this. If you have a piece of metal, a piece of steel that is hardened for a reason, and you're afraid of taking the temper out of it, you probably don't want to use this method. I think that's probably the only caveat to doing it with a torch. As far as castings and things go, have at it. If it's uh, things like just heavy mild steel, I did a rotted in hitch for a guy on a, on a bus here about a year ago or so, and that was, I don't know, it was like an inch and a half square or something. I had a full size torch and uh, it was rotted. Uh, the other shops couldn't get it out. None of the guys where I were working could get it out. I got a torch. The guy was having a, a cow. He thought I was going to ruin his uh, hitch assembly. And you know what? Took it right out of there in about 10 minutes. Cleaned it all up with a file and a brush real nice. Painted it. He was on his way. So, yeah, I mean, once, you, once you've once you got a feel for that torch, uh, I think there's no holds barred. Anyway, so I hope you got something out of this. I hope you learned something. And as always, from Florida, Don out.